Hello and welcome back to another episode of Supercoach Insider. My name is Ben. And I'm Chris. And thank you for joining us for our episode, was it season four, episode 27, Hot Topics for Round Six, Chris. Yeah, you almost got a little bit tongue-tied there. Season four episodes, we've, we've pumped out a lot of episodes and a lot of YouTube content as well. Yeah, tongue-tied, that's one of my best features. <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> Anyway, before you move on, please do like, subscribe, follow us on all our socials, SC Insider 100 on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, all our audio platforms as well, Spotify, SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, Player FM, Podbean, you name it, we're there. All right, mate. And now let's go into the main part of the segment. It's the final countdown. The final countdown. Whoa. I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Um, this is the, the main topics anyway, because Jordan Ridley obviously knocked the F out. So those who don't have him are licking their lips like a Christmas turkey. He's 588K. He actually dropped quite a little bit for those who own him. Break even of 190. So again, they're dropping their lip, uh, licking their lips, dropping to probably around a low 500. So if they don't have him, they're eyeing him off. He's still a highest averaging defender with a 113, 27% owned. He was only 13% not long ago. So the 14 that have him yep. really hurts, I think. Oh, I'd hate to be a, a Caleb Daniel owner last week that switched to Ridley. <laughs> yeah, we. It, what, what do we say? Get Ridley at any cost. Yeah, exactly right, yeah. <laughs> so sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they spend 100. After all, we are a, what uh, What page are we? We're a, an advice. We no, are we're an not advice an advice page, page, We're an opinion, we? an opinion page. We are an advice page. No, but. we're not. <laughs> Uh, uh, no, we are uh, an opinion page. We're an opinion page, and the opinion was to get him at any cost. Yeah. And unfortunately, for those that spent 150k from Caleb Daniel, you probably could have just waited and paid 50k. Yeah, uh, unfortunate. Uh, the really unfortunate thing is that if he averages 110 for the next few weeks, he's going to drop down to low 500s. Now, that's great for anyone that doesn't have him, and a lot of people don't. It's not great for those that do, but you've already paid for him. He's only going to be out the one week with concussion. You have to hold him. It's as simple as that. I agree, especially it's with the defender rookies that are there at the moment. Different scenario to last week with Daniel, and the difference is Daniel, Daniel sucks. we can't see being a top 10 defender, whereas Ridley is at this stage a clear number one. So you hold him regardless because you've already spent the money. There's no point. He's not going to lose from here on in. If he loses 80K, you're trading out, you're trading back. It's totally not worth it. It's not. 80K is not worth it. The reason we considered the Lockie Neal at the start of the year was because we thought he was going to drop 150, which would have made it worthwhile. And, and he, he dropped. Did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that, that was the consideration where I do agree, especially with the coverage. You just take that lower number knowing you're going to get the higher ones because if you trade him out, you have to get him back in when everyone else does. Otherwise, you are in trouble. And he's a clear. Yeah. A clear. So if you don't have him plan... For the next few weeks, wait for that price drop and get ready to jump on the Ridley train. Yeah, I agree. And I, I, even if you're facing a donut, do not trade Ridley. You trade a you trade a rookie. Like we've got three rookies on the bubble this week. Guarantee one of them playing. You t you cop the loss of points for the one week, and then you make it back on the back end when he's averaging you one twenty over the next however many weeks. Yep, I agree. Um, just do not mess with that. And uh, Jordan Degoe is the next one. 10% owned. 10% held the Degoe train, waiting for it to come around because there were worse options. Averaging 54 now after getting a busted nose and a concussion. Break even a 147. He's 340K. He is going under 300,000. He'll be like 297K in the next two weeks. Um, Yeah, no no chance of coming into my team at all. I might go there. Nope. Are you getting in the Vino? No, nah, it's a bit of red. Um, that's, that's, that's what I call Vino. Oh, Shiraz, mate. Don't go that low. <laughs> Um, Dugowie, I, I've at that price. If he goes to nope high two hundreds, I might go there. Nope, not touching it. Why not? He's just a roller coaster. I just can't be bothered riding. And not to mention that he plays for the team that I support. I cannot, for the life of me, have Dugowie and frustrate the hell out of me for not only for Super Coach but also when I watch him play football in real life. So, don't get me wrong. He's one of my favorite players. He's just so frustrating from a form perspective. One week he goes 150, the next week he goes 30. And there's no consistency. There's a low floor. Nah, not interested. Take just, nah, nah. I could be tempted. Nope. And um, I, I'm just not that desperate. <laughs> Again, like I just like a was, bargain though. You know me. I like a bargain. I, I see someone that uh, of that 
echelons, and if they've dropped like 200,000, like Jack Rewalt the other year dropped an absolute fortune and went down to 260. You know, I picked him up and then bang, played Gold Coast. Yeah, again, played like Gold Coast 200. Buy, 200, yeah. Or let, let's say you have a player that gets injured and you need a bailout option, like sure. But I don't think that he's a bailout option at this stage of the season. Surely not. Sorry to surprise you there, Chris. You never know what I keep back there. Oh, I know. I'm, I'm actually impressed. But you know what? I'm not impressed with the fact that there's only one glass. Like, that's not very nice, is it? Oh, thank you, sir. You can I'll drink out drink. of the bottle. I'm drinking from the bottle. Bum, bum, actually, bum, top bum, me up bum, a little bit. Bum. you got to drive, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me when, tell me when, tell oh, me when. No, right, no. You do oh, there's you. only that much. Dude, bro, yeah. I got this. Ah. No, what's that ad? It's not okay. Um. Right, now, the last one is Dan Houston, 514K... It's not that great. It was two for 20. It's okay. <laughs> and yeah, it's so called marking time and I was doing marking. So it worked out well. Marking time. Um, normally, if you are in the market for a nice red, um, Chris Ringland is my favorite go-to. Generally, you can get it from 18 to $25 unless you want to go the upper market. 50 bucks for the expensive, well, by my account's expensive. Chris Ringland, absolutely tasty. It is delicious water. Delicious. Uh, from the Dan's. So... Dan Houston, 514K, break even at 137, averaging 99.4, was averaging 112.3 before round five. Apparently, he's a test for this week. I hope he gets up for Chris's sake. I know Thank you. I nearly said misses, but I thought positive energy for Chris. <laughs> now, look, with Dan, it's all about roll. Again, I think that 116 was lucky considering he was playing midfield. And when he plays midfield, he plays as a defensive midfielder on the defensive side of the clearance and contest. I just don't love that from a SC scoring ability. However, if he comes back after this week and starts playing a defense again, he could go back into that designated user role. What we saw this week was Tom Jonas was the one taking kickouts. When Houston gets back 100%, he's taking bulk kickouts if he goes into defense. Yep. So, I think if he tweaked himself and he's a test, then you're not going to put bulk minutes into that work. You're going to back him off for at least a month and then all of a sudden he'll be like, oh, and then by that point, they're probably close to getting some players back. Maybe Rockcliffe now won't get knocked out all the time. Yep. So, And with the 137 break even, you don't need to bring him in this week. You can wait on it week, two weeks, see how it goes. Um, I'm Yeah, of course, the bad thing about Houston this week, if you have him, is that he is a test for Sunday and you won't find out. So you kind of just got to hold him. You won't worst, know until Saturday night and then no. it could be a laid out as well. Yeah. Very, very last laid out. Now, the worst part about that is if you also have Ridley like I do and you know Highmore's not named, you're pretty much screwed. Like if if Highmore's not named cause, and you won't find out about Highmore. But can, you can't trade out Houston though. He's killing it as well. Well, it could be. No, I wouldn't. I'm not going to. I'm just going to take a risk. Like worst case scenario, a copper donut. Like. That is the worst case scenario. A Sunday night donut. What are you, you going to do? Other people are going to cop it this year. I'll donate to the Cancer Council if I need to. Um, but yeah, that's 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 all you can do really there. If you've yeah, I don't. There's nothing else I can say. There's no way that we can find out that information beforehand to make an informed decision. You kind of got to cross your fingers and hope that either one of Highmore or uh, both of Highmore and Jones are named. Or yeah, you need two of the three. So. Um, Highmore, Jones, and Houston. You need two of those to play if you've got Ridley also out. Yep. I think I'm lucky. I only need one to be named, so I'm kind of hoping Highmore gets up and I still might do the extra rookie move there, so we'll see mm -hmm. how we go. Absolutely, mate. That wraps us up. And uh, look, until next time, guys, we'll see you soon and we'll talk again later. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Cheers.